Hello everyone, hope you're having an amazing day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some contestants who made it to the black jacket phase and how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys! Jessica Cabo Being quiet from the start, Jessica Cabo, a season 1 contestant, slowly grew more confident and became one of the strongest chefs of that season. Although, she would certainly be described as someone with a terrible attitude and a lack of care for her own mistakes, whether they were big or small. Often, she would be caught rolling her eyes or sighing heavily, was incapable of getting over petty grudges, and more. Her flawed personality only hurt her in the end since she went into a downward spiral during the black jacket phase which led to her eventual elimination. Throughout the competition, Cabo never seemed shy to voice her opinions and was never really scared to express her feelings in a given situation. A clear example of this would be when she decided to convince both Ralph and Michael to sabotage Elise during a dinner service. Despite her distasteful character, she developed friendships with Wendy and Mary Ellen as well as a deeper one with Ralph. On the other hand, she did have a running feud with a contestant named Andrew Bonito and wasn't exactly happy that he survived over Mary Ellen. Fast forward to the point where Cabo hung up her jacket, Gordon Ramsay interestingly gave no comment on her elimination. Following her appearance on the show, she went back to working as a cook at one of her friend's restaurants. Though, after a while, she decided to move on to bigger things and open her own restaurant called Brick and Mortar. Alongside this, she went to become the head chef at Cam Cafe at the Cameron Art Museum in 2013. Now, she occupies the executive chef position at East Oceanfront Dining inside the Blockade Runner Beach Resort in North Carolina. Seems like she's doing well. Keith Green Beginning as the strongest link to the blue team, Keith Green, a season 2 contestant, went on to become one of the best cooks of that season. Nicknamed K. Grease, he had quite a bit of a humorous personality and was consistently cracking jokes to lighten the mood. However, most notably, he's known for confronting Gordon Ramsay about his judgment call during the final elimination. Choosing Virginia Dahlbeck over him, Green questioned whether or not he was making the right decision. What do you guys think? Anyway, Green didn't seem to get too close with many of the contestants, but did build a strong bond with Garrett until he broke a promise that he made with him. The only other person that he seemed to like talking to was Heather since they both enjoyed clowning on Virginia. Fighting his way to the black jacket portion of the competition, he didn't take his elimination very well as mentioned. Rudely telling Chef Ramsay that he chose Virginia because he had a hard on for her, the famous chef schooled him in response. Before heading out, Green gave a warm goodbye to Heather but completely ignored Virginia. Ramsay expressed that, you got two choices, you run the team or the team runs you, and sadly the team ran Keith. If Keith could only lose the attitude underneath all that, there's one talented cook. Fast forward to several months after the competition ended, Green worked at JLX alongside his bestie Heather. Eventually moving on to something else, he became the executive chef at Schmidt's Food Market. Soon after, Green would get married and father a wonderful daughter and son until something very unfortunate happened. According to the New York Post, the reality show chef was found on the East End drowned at the popular Hamptons Beach. After what was a morning swim, his body was discovered by a couple who were walking alongside the shore. What a grim ending to his story. May he rest in peace. Jen Yamola One of the nicest and most solid cooks of the third season, Jen Yamola, fought her way to the black jacket phase. Always being the first to admit when she did something wrong, she generally got along with the other contestants. Being very consistent when it came to challenges or dinner services, she became the obvious choice for the red team's leader. As the competition progressed, she formed a friendship with the season's winner, Rock, despite there being some issues between them. Most of all, the contestants that Yamola seemed to really get close to were Bonnie Muirhead and Julia Williams. Unfortunately, despite having a ton of talent, the chef was eliminated during the final nominations. Praising Yamola for her determination and talent, Ramsay congratulates her for coming so far and she ends things by giving a tearful goodbye to the final two contestants. As a result of her loss in the competition, Yamola's mental health seemed to deteriorate and it was pretty worrisome. Supposedly, the unforgiving and harsh conditions of being on Hell's Kitchen made her feel very suicidal. Although, with a lot of counseling and therapy, she was able to make it out of this dark place just fine. Finally recovered, she decided to return to her career as a pastry chef at the Inn at the Turkey Hill in Pennsylvania. Eventually getting married and mothering one amazing daughter, she now has the last name Ravak. To this day, she runs a cooking decorating business called Gentastic Sweets, named after a TV cooking show that she hosted. We're really glad she's in a better place. Corey Erling A season 4 contestant, Corey Erling, started off as a horribly manipulative and backstabbing person. For example, she decided to nominate Christina and Jen for elimination for strategic and personal reasons rather than because of their cooking or teamwork skills. Additionally, she would attempt to sabotage people in the kitchen, was arrogant about her skill level, and would seduce a contestant named Jason into giving her info about the blue team. Although at around the midpoint of the competition, her attitude seemingly shifted into something much more tolerable. She seemingly turned into someone who was very sympathetic and would help other contestants in need whether that was with their personal issues or cooking skills. 
Thanks to this much needed change of attitude, Erling grew into a very strong chef who without a doubt had very strong and consistent skills. As the competition moved forward, she developed a friendship with Petroza and strong ones with Christina and LaRosse. On the other hand, some contestants couldn't forget her initially terrible personality, which resulted in running feuds with Jen and Matt. Come time to the final nomination, Erling and Christina chose each other, but Ramsey decided to eliminate Erling. Despite this fact, Ramsey expressed that he was very proud of the final three since he had grown very close to them. Before leaving, the talented cook hugged the final two contestants and was promised by Christina that she would pick her for her team. While Erling may not have done a ton since her appearance on the show, it's still impressive nonetheless. She became a food stylist with a collection of large clients, but eventually stuck to running her own soup company for a while. Changing her last name to Belle after getting married, she gave birth to a wonderful daughter and is living happily. Good on her. Andrea Hainley Strong and a doubtless leader, Andrea Hainley, a season 5 contestant, proved herself to be a talented chef by making it to the Black Jackets phase. Hainley might have been seen as a bit of a nuisance at certain points since she would never own up to her mistakes. Though, generally speaking, she still remained friendly to everyone and led her team in the right direction. Something she struggled with in the kitchen was being horribly inconsistent, having tons of moments of genius, while also having awful performances. Developing a bond with Danny and an even closer one with Paula, she had a long-running feud with Carol due to her sabotages and physical threats of violence. Nominated for elimination, Heinley was chosen by Ramsey, but not without first being complimented on her hard work and determination. After being booted from Hell's Kitchen, she went on to become the sous chef at a restaurant called Stokesay Castle. A while later, she moved on to become an executive chef for the very first time at the Peanut Bar restaurant. Ariel Contreras Fox As a quick little entry, we're going to discuss a season 6 contestant named Ariel Fox, who appeared on Hell's Kitchen twice. During her first run, she was described to be one if not the sanest woman in the show's history since she was always so calm and collected. Being in a notoriously cutthroat red team, she proved herself to be a suitable leader, which is why she got so far. However, after being eliminated and ranking third place, she left the competition but with tons of compliments from Chef Ramsay who praised her for her ambitious and passionate nature. Returning in the 18th season of the show, this contestant took the winning title which brought a lot of opportunities her way. For one, Fox was given the opportunity to work as an executive chef at the Hell's Kitchen restaurant in Caesar's Palace but turned it down. Rather, she decided to become the vice president at culinary at Del Frisco's Grill and Del Frisco's Double Eagle. Additionally, with the help of her mother, she published her own children's book called Freckle Face Foodie, Journey of a Young Chef. Currently, she's married and is the mother of a wonderful daughter. How nice. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.